Good afternoon and welcome everyone. I'm just gonna give one minute to allow most of our attendees to come in before I start the introduction. Thank you, Garba. Yes, and happy Friday, everyone. Um, there were over a hundred people signed up for the session today. So I'm going to, like Garba said, give it a, a minute here because I know it can take a while for everyone to move from the waiting room into the actual Zoom room. And then we'll get started. But if you want, feel free to say hi in the chat. Let us know what you're looking forward to. Let us know if you're doing anything fun this weekend. Um, I'm going to New York City with my husband this weekend. Tomorrow is his birthday. So we're going to go see a Broadway show. He is a theater teacher in high school. So Broadway is very big in our family. Um, I'd love to hear what anyone else is doing this weekend while we're waiting here a little bit. Good. Um, <clears throat> good morning once again and welcome. Uh, my name is Gagba Shokonuche Yahaya and I'm the training coordinator with the Temple Small Business and Development Center. Uh, the Temple Small Business and Development Center helps small businesses start and grow. Uh, we offer free one-on-one -on -one consulting and a variety of low to no cost webinars. Uh, we are proud to be part of the nationally accredited network of the Small Business and Development Centers, which has over 1,000 networks across the United States of America. Uh, you are here this afternoon for a webinar on basics to digital marketing design. Uh, without further ado, um, I would like to introduce my speaker, even as she takes over the floor for the presentation. Ms. Sarah, you are welcome. Great, thank you so much, Garba. And I love seeing everyone engaging in the chat. Um, love to see that, especially on a Friday afternoon. I'm happy you all made some time to learn a little bit more about digital marketing, how it can help you and your business. Um, and I love to see what you're doing this weekend. Looks like some of you are gonna be enjoying the nice fall weather. Someone just got a new PS5, uh, spending some time with friends and family. That's great to see. So I know this is an hour and a half session that feels like a lot of time, but there is so much to be said in Canva. So I'm gonna jump right in here. So as Garba already said, I'm just gonna plug the Temple SBDC really quickly. I see a lot of very familiar faces on the call. And um, if you are brand new, or this is your first time interacting with us here at Temple SBDC, I just wanna reiterate that we do provide a ton of different consulting and uh, service offerings to those in the small business community. So we are located here in Philadelphia, but we do offer digital marketing services statewide. So some of you might be joining us here from Philly, you might be in Scranton or Harrisburg, wherever you are, we are so happy to have you online on a Friday. And of course, besides doing these webinars, we offer one-on-one -on -one consulting, um, web design assistance, social media assistance. And if you're looking at other things like business planning or financial loan program, like program assistance, those kinds of things, really runs the gamut, but whatever you're looking for, we can help you one-on-one -on -one here at the Temple SBDC. So please do take advantage of all we have to offer. Um, just a little spiel about myself. I, like I said, I see a, a couple of familiar names uh, on the list here. So some of you might already know all of this about me, but my name is Sarah and I'm our Digital Transformation Program Manager here at Temple SVDC. So in case you are wondering who I am and why I'm the one talking to you today, I do specialize in digital marketing and design. I love Canva, just putting that out there. If you've seen any of the graphics that we do here at Temple SBDC, the graphics for the event today, any of our flyers, um, any of our videos or little GIFs or anything like that, we make all of those in Canva. So if you like the way those look, then you already got a sneak peek at what it, you are capable of doing inside of this really great platform. So I'm a huge Canva guru. And besides that, you've probably seen me do social media series, email marketing, et cetera. Those are all things that I specialize in. But I'm also just a huge fan of economic development and helping the small business community. Before working here at Temple, I worked at the Delaware Small Business Development Center. I've worked at the Delaware State Chamber of Commerce, and I'm a solopreneur myself. I do a lot of academic coaching and instructional design for local universities in the area. So I'm more than happy to speak with you on any of these key topics. You can always send us an email at sbdc at temple.edu to get in touch with me. Um, so without further ado, let's take a look at the agenda for today. So we're gonna talk about Canva, right? Digital marketing made easy. Um, just in the last couple of years, digital marketing has become so much more accessible to small businesses. Before you were stuck with paying for really um, expensive programs like Adobe, Photoshop, InDesign, Illustrator, which were clunky, took up a lot of memory on your desktop that were not very user-friendly for someone that maybe didn't get a degree or a certificate in graphic design. 
But Canva, which actually originated as a small business out of Australia, um, came and kind of broke the market in a sense and has made this so much easier for all of us who are trying to go digital. So today we're going to talk a little bit about why you would want to do digital marketing, which might seem self-explanatory, but I like to kind of set the tone for the, for the session. And then we're going to say what Canva is. Some of you might already know, which is why you signed up. Some of you might be like, I have heard of it, but I don't really know what it does. Um, we're going to talk about the options when you're in Canva. So there's definitely a free version. But if you want to pay for one of the other versions, we're going to talk about that as well. So you know your options. We're going to go step by step through the usage. So how you sign up, how you're going to make a post, how you start playing with some of those editing skills. And then we're going to talk about how you can use it for your marketing. So we're going to talk about static marketing, like just making photos and flyers and dynamic marketing, like GIFs and videos and some of that fun stuff as well. And then you guys know I love to give a next steps. So I would be remiss if I didn't give you a call to action for what's next after this webinar, giving you some ideas of how you can continue to grow your Canva skills. Um, so we are going to be taking questions throughout the session. I am going to pause at some key points, but if you have something you want to um, ask while I'm in the middle of a slide, please feel free to put that in the Q&A and I will get to it as soon as I see it pop up. So let's see, like I said, we're going to set the tone. What is digital marketing? Probably this is a self-explanatory question for most of you. You are probably thinking, yes, Sarah, I get it. Digital marketing is how we go and post stuff on Facebook and on Instagram and send people emails so they know that our product exists. And you would all be correct, but I want us to figure out why digital marketing is so relevant in today's society. So it really encompasses not just social media. It's your e-commerce website. That is digital marketing. If you have a website or you're selling a product online, if you're utilizing social media for sure, search engine optimization, which is how people find you on Google and other search engines, anything that relates to graphics, you, the user experience or the user interface, that's what UI UX stands for. That's just some basic technological terminology that really just stands for what is the user experience when they're looking at your stuff online. Um, any kind of video or content you're making. So really there's a huge amount of stuff that goes into digital marketing. And we could spend a huge amount of time just going over the academic definition of it. I don't wanna spend that time here, but I did call out and highlight in yellow what I really want you all to take away from this slide, which is digital marketing is beyond just going door to door or having flyers or having a brick and mortar store. It is 24 seven um, contact with your business. So being on social media or having a website, that is better than just having a sales representative that's available eight to five. You are constantly able to be found. So it's really important when you're starting out, especially, and you want people to find you and you want people to buy your product to be able to engage that larger audience. It's larger than traditional methods, like I said. So when you're looking at prospects, it completely changes the game for you as a small business but you have to do it correctly, right? So digital marketing has a lot to do with where people can find you, but you also want to draw their attention. You only have maybe three to five seconds of someone's attention span when they're scrolling through social media or searching for something online to grab them. So how are you going to grab them? You need to have digital content that is engaging. And that's where being able to do some basic design aspects in a program like Canva will be really helpful for you. Um, it's not going to be enough to just, you know, make a Facebook account and then never post on it, right? You need to have stuff to post. It's not enough to just have a website. You probably need some engaging pictures or some content on there. So when we talk about digital marketing, it's not just where you can be found, but what is drawing people to stay engaged once they've found you. So where to start? This is not digital marketing content specific. I just recommend this for everyone. And I set the tone here intentionally because Canva is great. And you can do so much in Canva that it can seem overwhelming. But when you decide what types of digital marketing content you want to start with, I want you to do so purposefully. And I want you to consider making some kind of marketing plan. And I don't mean write an essay. It's not like a business plan where you might like need 10 pages of research or analysis but I want you to consciously spend maybe a couple of hours figuring out who your target market is. Who are you trying to reach? Because that's going to decide not only where you are putting your marketing, but what kind of content you're making, the aesthetic, the pictures you're putting up, the coloring, depending on what demographic you're trying to reach, that's going to 
greatly affect the way you're making your marketing. You also want to be able to easily describe your product and figure out what that's going to mean for your strategies. Define the budget. So like I said, there are free versions of Canva. There are paid versions of Canva. Define for yourself what the return on investment for you is going to be in terms of the marketing. And then set goals. I encourage you to set smart goals about your marketing. So for example, you might spend a lot of time making Facebook photos on Canva, which we'll talk about later in this presentation. But if you're not seeing a lot of engagement or you're not seeing as much engagement as you would like for the amount of time you're spending there, it might be worthwhile to pivot or try testing a different platform. But unless you have a goal or an idea of what you're trying to accomplish, you're, you might just be a little aimless in the strategy. And I don't want to see you waste time unnecessarily. So keep in mind when you're making content and finding where to put content, who are you trying to reach? What's the goal? And are you able to easily describe your product to people to grab them? We could spend an entire presentation just talking about market planning. But like I said, I want to set that tone as we go into this because Canva is very exciting. I just want to make sure you have a goal for what you're going to do next. So let me see here. We have a quick Q&A. Can we get a copy of the slides? Yes, you will all receive a copy of the slides and a link to the recording in a follow-up email. It goes out normally within one to two business days. So thanks for asking that. All right, so here's the meat of it, right? You all probably want me to get started talking about Canva. So what is Canva? If people could just put in the chat, if you've used Canva before, I'd love to see that. Or if you're saying I've heard of it, but I've never used it, let me know. I would love to just kind of see the spread in the room of how many people have touched it before, how many people are just thinking I've heard of it, but never really used it yet, because this is the time to start using it right now. Um, so for those of you that have used it, this might seem like a bit of a repetitive slide, but I know there are people in the room that have just heard of it and know it's kind of cool, but maybe haven't seen it or know what it does. So as you could probably guess from the title of this presentation, it is a graphic design platform. It is you user friendly in a way that no other graphic design platforms have been before. Like I said, it came out of this entrepreneurial idea of some university students in Australia and has really grown to be an international concept and a way for many of us to diversify and grow our marketing in a way that was way too expensive, you know, in prior years. Um, but it's all about visual content. So I do want to make that disclaimer. With digital marketing, you can certainly do a lot of copy content like blog writing and things like that. Canva is really to help you with your visuals, which I know is one of the things many small businesses struggle with the most because you might not have any graphic design experience or video editing experience or any of that. Like that can be really overwhelming when you're trying to dive into digital marketing. This is where Canva is going to come in and really help you out. Yep, so some people said only heard of it. Some people said I've used it and I'm confused. And some of you have um, used it daily. So that's great to see. So like I said, there's a huge mix and that's why we're calling this Canva Basics. I wanna make sure there's something all of you can get out of this. So one of the things I will say is like I said, it has a free version and paid subscriptions, which we're gonna go through. And the thing that makes it so awesome is that it has thousands of templates. And we're gonna talk about these templates in a second, but no matter what you're trying to do, if you're brand new to your business or just brand new to your social media account or trying to figure out what kind of content to make, it has templates that are already sized correctly for anything you're trying to do. So if you're trying to design a business card, instead of going onto you know, an Adobe Illustrator style platform and having to type in the, you know, the three inch by one inch dimensions that you want, it has templates that are already the dimension sizes you want, and then you can just really focus on what's on it. Same thing with Facebook cover photos, um, LinkedIn banners, flyers that are eight and a half by 11. It has it all pre-sized for you, which is probably one of the most helpful aspects of this app. And I'll talk about that a little bit more as we go. The other thing is it gives you a lot in terms of content for um, visual photography. I've met with many small businesses who say, I want to start using, you know, more visual content because I know photos get three times the engagement and videos get eight times the engagement on social media, but I have no idea where to take, get photos. And I don't know what photos to take myself. And while I definitely think you should dabble in taking some photos of your product or what's going on in your business personally, there's a huge repertoire of photos that you can find on Canva. Many of them are free. Some you will have to pay a dollar per image if you're using the free version. Um, 
but just in terms of finding photos, it's another huge, huge lift. So that's kind of what Canva is in a nutshell. Shell, you can create a ton of different designs. It gives you the photos. It kind of has things pre-templated for you. Um, just overall, much more user-friendly than some of the other options. And here's what I mean by that. So like I said, pre-Canva, there were a couple other very popular graphic design platforms. Maybe some of you have heard of them. There's, you know, Adobe Photoshop, InDesign, Adobe Illustrator. Funnily enough, they're all <laughs> basically owned by Adobe. So Adobe really had cornered this market. Um, but in case you were curious, because I've had people ask me this question before, what is the difference or why might I want Canva versus these other platforms? It's really going to depend on what you're trying to do. So I have these two charts that conveniently will break it down in two different ways. So I'm gonna start with the, the graphic on the left here. So in terms of the content, what are you trying to make? If you're trying to make social media graphics, worksheets or eBooks, those kinds of things, Canva does that 100%. Anything that is templated in that way, Canva can do for you. As you can see, Photoshop isn't really meant for that. InDesign can certainly do it for you. An Illustrator has some functionality, but not all the same functionality. But the disclaimer here is if you're trying to edit a photo, you know, and make like a transparent background on it or change the way someone's shirt is colored or anything like that, that is not something Canva does. So just to be clear, it does help you make content, but it's not a photo editor. Um, you, don't, you don't draw and illustrate and it's not very good at icons. So just setting the tone here, but as you can see, if you wanted those things, Photoshop definitely has the corner on photo editing. Um, and InDesign, as you can see, basically does the same thing as Canva. Uh, so if you were trying to figure out if Canva is the right fit for you, this might be something to consider depending on what you're trying to accomplish. Now the graph on the right shows you the features and the efficiency and the pros and cons essentially of each of these platforms. So I encourage you first to look at the chart on the left and figure out what you're trying to accomplish and then figure out if the rest of the model makes sense for you. So as you can see, Canva is the only one that's free. Um, so I know people like that <laughs> price tag, they like the free, or you can pay for the pro version, which is $13 a month, which we'll talk about next. But all of the other options you do have to pay, whether it's $10 a month, $21 a month. Um, the features, Canva is really just basics. Photoshop is photo specific. So like I said, if you're looking for photo editing, you're probably gonna wanna go to Photoshop. InDesign and Illustrator, as you can see here, it says more than enough. It is way more than enough for what most of you small businesses are trying to do and what you're trying to accomplish. And that's why it's so expensive. It's really robust and um, probably does more than you're going to need it to do. Uh, Canva, in terms of efficiency, I love this terminology here. It's literally a drag and drop. And I'm gonna show you how it drags and drops. I'm gonna do a live demo for you. It's very effective in that way. InDesign and Illustrator, it's easier when you have experience. If you don't have any experience, it's going to be tougher. And Photoshop is just inefficient comparatively. Um, so then we look at web print quality and speed. Uh, like I said, you can see where InDesign kind of has its pros, but that's based off of its pricing model. And then it's trying to be for more expert users. So if you're looking at something that can do the basics for you, that can still look very clean and very professional and is cheaper, Canva is probably something worth considering. So I just like to put this out here at the beginning because people always ask, you know, what about Photoshop? What about InDesign? Well, here's the spread. You can review it for yourself and figure out what makes sense for your business. But as you can see, I highly advocate Canva, especially for beginners because of this drag and drop method and that most of you are going to be starting in this social media graphics, worksheets and flyers space. Not many of you are probably trying to do a crazy amount of photo editing at this time. Um, so that's where we're looking in terms of the competition. Canva definitely stands out and that it's meant for basic, easy use design. And then let's take a look at that pricing model. So like I said, you can certainly get Canva for free. There is a ton you can do with the free version. It has over 250,000 free templates, 100 design types. There's hundreds of thousands of free photos, like I said, which is a huge lift because then you don't necessarily have to go find all of your own photos. Um, but it is a little bit limited in terms of how much, you know, unique branding you can do if that's something you're interested in. And if you have a team and how much you can share with your team. 
just based off of experience, I know a lot of the people that end up on these calls are solopreneurs or smaller businesses. So the free version might do everything you want it to do. If you're interested in the pro version, like I said, it's $13 a month. You can also do it where it gets billed yearly at $120 a year. So it slightly, you know, brings the price down a tiny bit. It does everything free does, but you also get a brand kit, which we'll talk about later. Um, and you get way more free photos. And Canva is smart. They know their business model. So in the free version, there are going to be a lot of photos that you're going to want that are business related. And they almost all of the business related photos, you do have to pay that dollar for versus in the pro version, they're all just free because you paid for the pro version. With that said, you can always use a free photo um, website like Pexels or pixabay.com to get photos and lift them and put them in Canva. I always advocate for that versus paying the dollar. Um, but if you want ease of use and more variety in what you can get, you can consider Pro. Um, it does have more templates as well. That's really the biggest difference here. And then of course, Enterprise is probably a little bit outside of the scope of what most of you are looking for. It's really meant for people with a huge team where you're trying to share um, you know, different graphics back and forth and try editing them together in real time. You might have tons of different colors and logos and brand controls that you're trying to keep track of. So most of you are probably gonna consider the free or the pro version. I'm more than happy to talk a little bit more about this if anyone's interested but just want to give you the idea up front of what you're going to be experiencing when you're looking at Canva in terms of pricing. Someone just asked what those free photo sites were, Pexels and Pixabay, and I'll put that in the chat, pixabay.com. So I love these sites. They uh, allow you to look at photos and then download them for free. They are sourced from local photographers around the world, you know, who put them up for free. So it's always nice to just give that photographer a shout out or, you know, um, say that that's where the photo came from, but they are royalty free and they're not, you know, they're just basically stock images that you can utilize. So I would always recommend taking a look at those before you go and pay the dollar. Um, let me see what else we had in the chat here really quick. Thanks. And Daria said Adobe Sketchbook is free if anyone did want to do that draw illustrate task. So on the previous slide, we talked a little bit about um, how Canva doesn't do the draw illustrate option for you. You might want to consider Adobe Sketchbook. Thanks, Daria. Yes. And Unsplash.com. I like Unsplash.com. I just went on there recently and they did some kind of partnership with iStock now. So you just have to be careful if you go to Unsplash.com because if you just Google an image right now, um, some of them are free and some of them actually take you to iStock.com and ask you to pay. So I don't like recommending them as much anymore. Pexels and Pixabay, I think are just a little bit more user-friendly just in the past few months because now on Unsplash, you might get trapped and get routed to iStock. So um, just keep that in mind. But those are all three sites where you can get free stock photos uh, instead of paying or consider Canva Pro. So with that said, that's the pricing model. Here's another way to look at it. So you might be saying, okay, that slide kind of made sense because it's based on teams and things like that. But what does it really mean for me in terms of my ability to make the graphics I want to make? Here's a really good breakdown for you. And you're more than welcome to review this when you get a copy of the PowerPoint slides. Here's the really obvious breakdown in terms of number. So 250,000 free templates versus 420,000 free templates. Obviously both are still a huge number of free templates. You can see the difference in photos. 200,000 free photos or 71 million free photos. So I think that's one of the biggest lifts with Canva Pro is just the huge spread of photos that you now get. And then of course you get a couple different graphic elements and video templates and fonts, you know, but um, for the most part, free is gonna do what you're gonna need it to do. And Pro has just extra options um, in terms of all of those extra little things that you may or may not even be willing to start doing with your, um, graphics yet you know you might say i'm not ready for animation effects so does it really matter five six versus 14 it might not for you um and then the other thing that we're going to talk about a little bit later is that brand kit because branding is very important uh brand kit bro you have multiple you can make multiple brand kits and we'll talk about that later versus canva free you just have one brand kit and you can't do a crazy amount with it but i have a whole slide dedicated to what a brand kit is and why you might want it so with this in the background, thinking about what Canva does, how it goes up against its competitors and the pricing model, let's get into using Canva, right? That's what you're all here for. So, <clears throat> excuse me, let's jump right in. Some of you said you've never used Canva before. 
So how do you create a Canva account? This is probably the easiest slide. You'll go to canva.com, <coughs> excuse me, and you can sign up. And you can either put an email and password in and make a completely brand new account, or you can connect it with your Facebook or your Google. Completely up to you. Some people like connecting it with their Facebook or Google because then when you're logged into either your Google Chrome or something like that, then you automatically get logged into Canva. Or it's easier to share Google Drive, you know, stuff that you might have in your storage. Completely up to you what you would like to do here, but you have three separate options to create an account. Once you've created an account, this is what it's gonna look like essentially. It's gonna give you this pop-up with a home tab, some templates. It's gonna have a search bar where you can start searching for things. And then it'll have this giant list of categories underneath. So like I said earlier, right? Canva is known for having all of these things that are templated in the correct size you already want them to be. And you can just see from this GIF here that you can have book covers, calendars, graphics, gift certificates, media kits. I mean, it has everything. So now you're gonna wanna create something. We're gonna talk really quickly about the basics of creating something. And on this next slide, you'll see, um, this is, I'm sorry, I'm gonna go back one. If you click the home, so this would be the, the first step. You can either search here for a template and go from there, or we can click this home button. And what happens when you click the home button is it'll show you all of your information. So the home is really your home base. It's gonna show you um, all of your designs or recent designs you were working on, anything that was shared with you, et cetera. If you had created a brand kit, you know that all shows up here on the side when you click the home. And it also maybe show you some things that are recommended for you. The good news is even if you click home, now you can see all of your work, but the center of the page is still gonna be a search bar. And you still have the option to search for any of those templates. Or if you weren't looking for a specific template, but you were looking for a specific color or type of graphic, like something with an ocean on it, for example, you can also always type that in the search bar and see what pops up. Um, but the search bar is pretty much always available to you. So no matter where you go on this, you'll be able to find your search bar. So let's say, instead of going to the search bar though, you know exactly what you want. You wanna create a design. You already have the idea in your mind. You don't wanna just you know, find some random template in the search bar. You can create um, a design by clicking the purple button at the top that says create a design. And the next slide is gonna show you what happens when you go to that page. So we'll, we'll click create a design and this pops up. Looks exactly like this screen. It'll have this giant list of options on the left, which can seem kind of overwhelming. And it'll have a blank canvas for you. I encourage you, if you're brand new to Canva, to just try something really simple like this. So what is this GIF doing? It's pick, you'll click a template. So you can start with something that's, a like I said, they have over 4 to 20,000 free templates in uh, the free version. You'll click on templates and it gives you all of these options of different templates that you could use. And you can just click on one of them. You don't even have to have it be in the correct size right now, just kind of start playing around. So as you can see with the mouse, this person just flicked on the first template that was there. And you can see how easy it is to then click on each of the different icons that are on here already and edit it. So for example, if you liked the way this red template looked, but you don't want it to say quick nap, because why would you? That has nothing to do with your business. You can change it to say ecom say, for example, if that was your business. So we're gonna go through that too right now. Let's say you were on that graphic, you can um, change the font by just literally clicking the box. And then you can see over here on the left, it gives you an option for all of these different fonts. So you can pick a pre-templated design, change it to say what you want it to say. You can change the size, as you can see up on the screen at the top. You can change the size, you can change if it's bold, if it's centered, like any of those normal things that you could do in Word or PowerPoint. And there are so many different fonts. There's over a thousand fonts here that you can choose from, over 3000 if you're in pro, and you can tell which fonts are only in the pro version because they have the crown for pro next to them. And let's say you want to change some of those icons in the background, right? So the template you had had this green circly bubble thing behind the picture, and you like the bubbly thing, but you don't want it to be red. That's easy, just click it. Once again, a drag and drop, click it, and it'll automatically have this pop up in the top that says, do you wanna crop it? Do you wanna flip the icon so the circle's upside down? Do you wanna change the color? And if you click on the color, it gives you so many options here. It says, these are the other colors in the document. If you want to match the document here, other colors 
next to the photo. So it's smart enough to know that your photo is brown and tan and black and ask you, do you also want your circle to be that color so it matches? If you're not very good at color design or color matching, this could be really useful for you to match it with your photos or you can pick a brand new color. So that is basically how you start editing something that was templated. I'm gonna show you how to do that in a second, but you might be asking what were all of those other tabs, right? That, that, so you just showed us templates, Sarah. So I could pick a template and then once I have the template, I could maybe change the font or change the color. That's all great, but there are an overwhelming number of other tabs on this side. And just in case any of you are new to Canvas, um, I'm sorry, Canva, it might look different when you log in now. These, it, they recently did an update where most of these actually fall under something they call more. So you might just see like templates, uploads and some you know text or something and then a more. These are still all elements that they have. They just redid the order of some of their um, options here on the left-hand side. I'm not sure why. I think they might've thought it was better efficiently. But let's take a look. So we just looked at templates, right? And you can click on any template you want and then edit anything that's in that template. You can change the color, you can change the font, you can change where things are moved on that template. You can upload your own photos. So like I said, you can go to a Pexels or a pixabay.com and find a photo and then just upload it into Canva. If you have a logo or something like that, you can upload it in, or you can click photos here, which is this um, uh, second to the left that I have and search for any of their photos that they have available. And those are all photos that you can use in your graphics. And like I said, I'm gonna do a whole walkthrough of this with you guys. There's also something called elements. So you can utilize elements like grids and you can tell that it's a grid that allows you to put a photo in it because it has this rolling green with the cloud. Essentially what that means is this is a grid for you to drag a photo into. So if you want your photo to have a circle frame instead of just being a square or however you uploaded it, it will retrofit it to that frame or that grid. It's a very cool concept. So we'll, we're gonna show you that. Or you might wanna add stickers or charts. They have a ton of different elements that you can just kind of add on to your graphic. So in terms of the capabilities to make it unique or make it whatever you want it to be, the possibilities are pretty endless here. Um, you can also go here and use different types of text. So like I said, when you click on the image, you can certainly change the text style, but you can also go to the text tab. And if you want to use some of their templates, they have text templates. Like you can see here, it says huge sale. You can just plop that right onto your graphic if you would like, or you can change the sizing here. Um, this is just basically helping you figure out the text size, which you can also always just change in your in your actual graphics. So I don't think the text tab here is as useful as some of these other ones, um, but it's worth exploring if you were interested. They have something called styles. So this is going to be the brand kit. So you might be someone who doesn't have a brand coloring yet, or maybe you know that your brand is always green and blue or something like that, but it's hard to always find the exact color schemes when you're making new graphics, right? To find that same hex code every single time can be really frustrating. What you can do is create something called a brand kit, um, which allows you to basically always have the colors that you want all of your products and I'm sorry, all of your graphics to look like saved so that you can always refer back to it. This is a really neat trick of the trade. And let's say you have no idea what you want your colors to be. Canva will recommend some color options for you. So these are all different, um, essentially brand kits that you can just use that they've pre-made. So, and it even gives you fonts, right? It gives you a heading font and a subheading font and a grouping of colors that would look good together. So you can use this to kind of help you figure out what you want your branding to be like. And I encourage you to do so, especially if you're kind of new to marketing, this is the perfect time to think about what you want your aesthetic to be because all of your branding on all of your social media, your website, it should have the same aesthetic. It should have the same color scheme. It doesn't have to look exactly, exactly the same, but definitely should have the same groupings of colors. The same font should be used for all of your graphics, you know, that kind of thing. That's just a basic digital marketing best practice, um, making sure that it looks cohesive, makes you look more professional, makes it easier for people to recognize your business when they're looking out at whatever's going on on the interweb. Um, 
so also just a fun digital marketing tip for those of you that don't use digital marketing very often, many businesses have three primary colors and three secondary colors. So if you're thinking, well, I can't, you know, I like having blue and green, but I can't have everything be blue and green. Maybe blue and green are your primary colors and you have a secondary color that's gray or black. So, you know, for each of these, you can see there's three, one, two, three, and then one, two, three. So they have three primary, three secondary. So you kind of can play around with how you're using your colors. And once again, that's a topic I could spend all day talking about, but that's just an intro to what that kind of means for you. You can make audio and videos in Canva now. Like you can make edited videos, you can make GIFs. I have a whole section on that, but that is something that we're gonna talk about later because there's a ton to be done there in terms of that dynamic content. Um, there's a background tab. This is similar to photos but it's really just meant to be like the background. So it's not a photo that sticks out in any way, but this might be what you want to be on the back of your graphic, you know, so that you can stick words on top of it and make it look fancier than just having a white or a solid green or a solid blue background. You can have the background be bricks or a desert or something like that. But essentially they're just um, a little bit simpler looking photos. Um, you can also add <laughs> a ton of different apps. And we'll talk about apps later. As you can see, this is just an inkling of all the different apps you can add to your Canva for free. So we'll talk about that in a second, but this is basically how you navigate it. So I just showed you, you know, how you pick a, um, a graphic up really quickly. And then this is what the entire left-hand side looks like, all the different tab options. So we're gonna take a look at what that looks like in real Canva. So you guys have an idea of what all of those pictures were just about. And I'm just gonna check the Q and A really quickly. Um, Jennifer asked, do you have a tip on how to organize all your graphics for finding them easier? Yes, and I can show you that when I go into our Canva. And then let's just see in the um, chat here, we have Jennifer asked the same thing. All right, great, we'll talk about how to organize them. You can search, um, I don't think it's by Pantone color number, Lori. It's, I'm pretty sure it's hex, the hashtag with the six numbers and letters. That's how you would find it in Canva. And then someone said, can you have it imitate a color scheme? Yes, you can also have it imitate a color scheme that you have on your website. If you already know what the color code, if it's a hex code or, you know, one of the, you know, if you had a Pantone code or something, um, Google it to find out what the exact code is and then put that code into Canva. And I'm more than happy to walk through that with someone as well. So um, I encourage you to do that if you already have a color scheme on your website. So let's take a look at what this looks like now. I'm going to exit my PowerPoint and we're going to go to Canva. So you guys are going to get to see the inside of the Temple SBDC Canva. We don't have anything to hide here. But as you can see, I had just logged in and this is the home page for me. I'm on the home tab. So like I said earlier, right, when you're on the home tab, it shows you what's recommended for you. I can click on all of my designs. I can share it with someone, whatever I think is easier. Um, we do pay for the pro version, so my brand kit is readily available right here. But let's just go through what I talked about, right? So let's say I want to create a design from scratch. I'll just click create a design. Oops, sorry, create a design. And um, I might want my design to be a specific image size. So let's say I want to make a Facebook post. I think that's something pretty much everyone might want to do with a graphic. You can also always search, you know, flyer, um, postcard you know, LinkedIn. I mean, you can do so much here if you want a LinkedIn banner. Let's say you don't really know what you want to start with. That's why the homepage starts with recommended for you. And if I wasn't sure what I want to create my design as, I can just look at some of these options here and go, okay, do I want to make a presentation or a poster? You know, what's going on here? And I might say, I want to, you know, make an Instagram post. So I'll create one. And this is what happens, right? I just showed you this on the slides. You start with a blank. Um, for those of you that have used Canva before, you're probably like, yeah, Sarah, I've kind of figured out how to do this part already. But for those of you that are new, I want you to feel comfortable experimenting in this space. Canva is free, so you might as well at least try it. Um, let's say you want to use uh, one of these templates. And by the way, why did I just pick Instagram? Because for those of you that have done some digital marketing already, you've probably noticed that Instagram um, posts are one of the hardest to make uh, from scratch because the sizing is so weird compared to a Facebook post or, um, you know, a cover photo or a flyer, things like that. It's a lot easier to do the sizing. Instagram squares can be really hard to size correctly or adding a photo to Instagram and making it fit that dynamic or that, um, 
I don't feel like dynamic was the right word there, but you know, making it fit that spacing is very difficult uh, because most people take a photo, when you take a photo on your phone or something like that, it's not a perfect square. So if you were thinking of how to make Instagram posts that actually look really nice and fit into that space, here's a perfect example. They're starting from scratch. As you can see here at the top, the first thing that happens is templates. So just as a disclaimer, by the way, you do not need to use a template. I could always go to maybe a background. Maybe I want my background to be this, you know, white line. Um, I can go to text then and, you know, like <laughs> add um, a text. Maybe I'm a bakery and I want it to say baked fresh, but I don't like how that orange looks against the gray. So, you know, you can click on this and I would just highlight it just as if you were in Word or PowerPoint, you know. And here at the top, I can change that text color. Let me say I want to be um, green. I'm sorry, that's red. <laughs> let's say I want to make it red. And uh, let's see what that looks like. Great. Um, I can then go maybe to elements. And here's what I'm talking about. You can add all these stickers. So let's say I want a sticker that's bread. I can literally search for a bread piece. Oh, look, that's a cute piece of bread. I'll just add that really quickly. And like I said, it's drag and drop. So I didn't want there. I can just drag it here. Um, let's say I wanted a photo. Now, this is something I highly recommend. If you're doing digital marketing, one thing that's going to really set you apart is not just having square photos. So instead of, um, you know, getting a photo of my bread that is just like this and putting it down here in the corner here, let me. And by the way, as you saw, I can resize any of the photos. I can make it big. I can make it small. But see how that kind of just looks blocky. It's kind of, I mean, not saying this is the worst thing ever, but it's a little blocky. So what you might want to do is go to our elements tab, right? That's where I got the sticker. Let's X out of that really quickly. You can also um, find your frames or, you know, you can just keep scrolling down until you find frames. When you're in this, it'll auto default to the last thing you searched for. So the last thing I searched for was bread icons. But if I scroll down far enough, I see my frames. And maybe I think it would look way cooler in this squiggly circle frame. So if I click on that, you'll see it adds the squiggly circle frame, which is great. I can make this smaller. I can make this bigger. And I'm going to just move. Did you see that? I'm going to do that again. This is one of my favorite things in Canva. I said, eh, I don't like the way that bread looks. I'm literally going to move it. Wow, look at that. <laughs> and now it looks so much cooler. Um, and it just really adds to the dimension of this picture. Totally different from that square. And there are tons of options here. I recommend frames all the time. So as you can see, there's many different frame options here. Let's see if I wanted to um, make it fade into the uh, image better. So let me see. I think there's one where you can have it kind of look like it's fading in and out. Um, let me go to see all. There's tons in here. Yeah, so something like this guy where I might, you know, I might want it to, um, let me delete that one. Let me delete this, this one. I don't want that. Here we go. Click on this one. And uh, maybe I want it to look like this. Same thing. I'll go to bread. I'll find my bread picture that I like and uh, put it right in here. Delete this one and put this one here. And now it's kind of fading in and out of the image, you know? So you might decide what you like better. I might not recommend this one with the picture of the bread because now you can't really tell it's bread. I might've kept that swiggle one, but there's a ton of options for sure. Um, let's say you wanted to use one of the templates though, cause that's a great place to start for a lot of people. And you like this one right here, spring is here, you know? And it already had, oh, this one's not a good example. Sorry, this is a graphic with a GIF. We'll talk about GIFs in a second. But let's just start with like a static one. This is just a static graphic. Maybe you like the way it looks, but you're not having a party. You want it to be something about um, your upcoming business. I don't know, grand opening. You can literally just change this grand opening. You can see that it's way too big. So I can just highlight it and change the size. You know, a lot of you are like, oh, okay, I can kind of see where this is, where you're coming from. Um, let me just make the size really small in comparison, you know, something like that. You can always click on any of these, any of these graphics here. So even if you don't like the color of this black pot, you can change that, make it green, whatever you want. Um, there's really a lot that can be done in the space. Let's say I want to be the other way. You'll go to flip, flip it horizontal, flip it vertical. I can make it upside down. Um, if anyone has any questions about some of these basic 
parts of just kind of playing around on Canva. I'm gonna give us some time now. So if you want me to show you something specific, put that in the Q&A um, before we move on to the next thing. But this is really the ease of just getting started. So here's another good example. Let's say um, you are opening your shop and you sell jewelry. This might be a good one. You might wanna say, you know, or let's do a different example. You're you're selling jewelry and you're having a jewelry sale, you know, jewelry sale. And then you like the way this looks, but none of these are jewelry. Once again, you can go to that elements, type in jewelry, see if there's any icons you can use. Maybe the earrings, you know, what else do we got? Maybe this gem. Um, so you really have a lot you can do here, or you can upload a bunch of your own images. So you can go here, you can upload photos of your own jewelry. And here's what I might do. I might take those grids. So we'll scroll down to the grids again and do a bunch of circle grids here and then have pictures of my own jewelry in little circles. And can you imagine how professional that looks in comparison? I mean, it's really crazy and so easy to do. So I'm gonna take a look at the Q&A and chat really quick. Um, I'll show you all how to organize your graphics better. And then someone has said, is there a way to permanently set the text line? <sighs> I'm not sure if there's a way to permanently set that, Robert, but when you're in here, um, in case anyone is curious what he's talking about, let's say I had two lines of text here. I'll just move this gem. You, there is so much you can do with the way things are spaced in here. Some of you might be really into changing graphics around, some of you might not, but let's say you want these closer together. There's actually this icon up here that lets you decide the letter spacing and the line spacing. So the line spacing is how close they are to each other. And if you want to make it instead of a one distance away from each other, like 1.5, see how it makes it farther apart. Kind of like if you were in a Word document, you can change the line spacing. And you can also change the letter spacing. So let's say I want the letters closer to each other or farther away, you know? I don't know if you guys saw it, that was a slight. I'm gonna try it again. You, you might've just seen the letters get farther and farther away from each other. I can even go the other way and try making them really close to each other. Um, so that's really up to you, what you wanna do here. There's an effects tab. If you want the letters to have a lift or an echo, see how that just kind of gave it a background. So if any of you have played around in PowerPoint, it has a lot of those similar options here that you can kind of play around with the effects of your graphics. And then of course, also still change the text font, change the color, um, not to be overwhelming. There's just a ton that can be done in Canva in this space. <laughs> Yeah, you, you might just wanna set up a stand, standard template, Robert, because I think it always defaults to one and then it would be annoying to then have to edit that every time you make a graphic, but I, I haven't heard of a way to kind of make a default for that. Um, let me see what else we got going on before I show the organization with the folders. Someone says, yes, Instagram sizing is the bane of my existence. Me too, it's, it's tough. Um, how can you apply content to a website template? So you cannot make a website template, like a web theme in Canva. It's not that fancy. But if you were, if you had a WordPress or a Shopify site, for example, and you wanted to make um, like graphics for your products or the header, like your WordPress header, um, one, you might want to have some web design experience to know the size you want. Um, but you can also just play around. So if any of you have been in our WordPress uh, webinars, you know, um, I think the speaker there, Aaron says, sometimes you just got to play around with the sizing and I can show you that right now. Um, so this was me using a real template, right? But um, I don't necessarily have to have it be this size if I don't want it to be. You can always click resize up here at the top. And I can certainly, if you scroll down, see what else I want to be. So someone just asked, how about Facebook cover photo? Here, I'll just click Facebook cover and I'll copy and resize this. It opens up a new page with the um, graphic I just made as a Facebook cover photo. So that's another really cool tool is you can copy and reuse your content content in different sizes if you want to. You will notice that it's still truncated as an Instagram post. But you know, if you have all the contents you want there already, you can then you know edit it to be the size of a Facebook cover photo. But certainly that's something you can do very easy. 
Um, and like I said, if you were trying to resize it for your website or something specific, you can try doing something like this. This is a pretty standard uh, website header look, um, or you might wanna try coming up with your own pixels. So right here, if you are savvy enough, you can pick the width and height that you want. You can change it to 100 by you know, 850 or whatever you would like it to be and copy and resize it again and take a look at that that turned out really funky. So, you know, you might, you can play around with it if you want to though, in terms of how you want it to look. This one, I would probably scrap. This was not the right sizing, but you can uh, really play around here. So with the website, you're gonna probably wanna know a little bit more about the pixel size that you need for your specific website. It's gonna be different for everybody. All right, let me see here. And then what I'm gonna do next is show you all how to organize them. So you have all your folders. What I would recommend is make folders for your different content, because one of the things that Canva is not great at is um, as you can see here, when you just look at all your designs, it's like looking into your child's toy chest. I mean, it's just all over the place. Most of it's in the last like recency. So last time you touched it, but that might not be the order you want. I recommend making folders like we have a couple here. And then when you make a design, and then I'm gonna move on because I wanna make sure we have time to hit everything. But when you make a design, let's say I pick this random design, you can decide where you want to save it. So um, save to folder, I will go file and save it to the correct folder so you can keep track a little bit better. I think with the free version, you only get two folders. So you might wanna be a little bit creative with that. Obviously with pro you get unlimited folder creation here. All right, um, let's see. I'm gonna go back to my PowerPoint. So that's kind of what it looks like a little bit. We played around. I wanna make sure that we can get to the rest of this as well. So like I mentioned, branding is really an important tool. I kind of showed you what that branding kit looks like. Basically what it allows you to do is save your photo, um, I'm sorry, your colors that you want and save the heading font that you want all of your stuff to have. With the Canva free, you just get a limited, brand kit, or you can use one of theirs. If you have Pro, you get to set it. And what that looks like, and I can show you my Canva again really quickly, is when I'm making a design, I'll go back to this one that I had. Um, if I click on this and look at the colors, the brand kit is right here. And these are the TU SBDC brand colors. So whenever I want to use the brand colors, they're saved for me to easily find versus having to go find the hex number or type it in and try finding it again. So if you, and I encourage you to come up with your branding color design, this is one way to do it, but you will have limited capabilities and free. Um, but I do encourage you to take a look at how you can utilize that for your site. And um, this is just another fun tool I like to throw in here. If you're like, I have no idea what I want my brand to look like, and I don't like any of the templates from Canva, you can use a site called coolors.co and it basically is a color scheme generator. So it'll just randomly sort colors that work together and let's say you really like when this green one pops up, you can just click on it and it locks it. And then just keep pressing the space bar as it sorts through the rest of them. And then, you know, lock the ones you like until you've created a color scheme that you like. And it's pretty easy and free to do. So um, take a look at that if you're trying to figure out your color scheming. So that's how you basically use create Canva. You know, that's the basics. But what can you create in Canva? That's, that's the big thing, right? Like I said, have that market plan in mind. Here's a list of some of those things. So you might be saying, yeah, I can make my Instagram post. I can make my Facebook cover photo. I can make my website header. Those were all great suggestions that I saw in the Q&A and chat. But I encourage you to get even more creative. You can create an Instagram story. Um, if any of you sat on the Instagram webinar I did a couple weeks ago, Instagram stories are huge. That's a great wide way to diversify yourself because not all businesses are doing that right now. Um, but they also have a very special template. So you might wanna use that. Um, you can certainly make invitations, cards, resumes, <laughs> postcards, um, infographics, brochures, business letterhead. So the options are really endless in this space. And these are all things that I would call static marketing materials, which is just that it's a photo that doesn't move. Essentially, it's static. I will say that a photo on a post is eons better than a post with just words. So even if all you can do right now is photos, I encourage you to put that with everything. Um, it's really going to change the way your engagement happens with your social media. 
and you're going to rank higher when people are searching for items and Facebook and Instagram, LinkedIn, they all have algorithms where, you know, posts with pictures get boosted higher. So take a look at some of these, start playing with some of them, especially if you were thinking Instagram or Facebook is going to be hard to get into because you can't figure out the spacing, free spacing. And if that's all you use Canva for, that's a great start. If you have YouTube, YouTube channel art, LinkedIn banners. I mean, like I said, it's really <laughs> got it all lined up for you. Um, but here are some other creative ideas because it's more than just using Canva, right? Part of what I'm here to teach you is how to use it strategically for your business. So like we talked about, social media cover photos is one of the ways I always recommend using it because it's so easy to do. And having social media cover photos that are not just a random picture or you know blank is, is gonna really set your profile apart professionally. Um, Instagram stories are huge. You can tell I have a trend in what I think is really popular right now for digital marketing. Highlight reviews, and I tell people this all the time, user-generated content is the best content for your business. To get someone else to want to jump to working with you, it's great to have reviews of how other people enjoyed working with you on your website, on your social media, wherever it is, but you don't want it to just be um, a post with words, right? Because one, is anyone going to read that? Maybe, maybe not. It's not going to get boosted as high. It's just not appetizing to look at. Look at this sample on the right. You can just take whatever size you want. You can take a postcard size, a Facebook post size, whatever, make it your own personal size and just take a template with um, you know, some cute colors, put a little quotation mark, which you can just search for a quotation mark sticker and stick it on if you want and uh, put a review and then use that. That is content that you can use and it makes it so nice. Put this on your website, put it on your Facebook. I always recommend doing something creative like that. Anytime you're using a quote or sharing that you were, you know, just given an award or anything like that, figure out a way to make it creatively more colorful um, and do something like this. That's a huge win. Another thing is easily, you know, easily share your marketing with others. So if it's templated in a way that's easier for other people to share, I recommend you to do it. Um, one of the things that's really cool about Canva is it makes it easy to share your stuff with others. And I'm going to show you guys that in a second. There's like a giant share button at the top. You can enter someone's email um, and then have them use it. So even if you're a team of one or even if you're a team of two or three, but you want, you know, other business owners or partners or people to see it and easily download it and share it as well, send it off. You know, these are the kinds of things that I recommend um, will grow your brand awareness is having people find you. A lot of that's going to be organic at first. Um, and like I said, not going to beat a dead horse, but brand consistency is so important. So having Canva and either utilizing the brand kit or looking at coolors.co or just having an idea of what your general theme is going to be is going to really lift your site. So that is static content. I know we didn't spend a lot of extra time on that just because it's pretty self-explanatory and I could literally show you all the different templates. And if we have time later, I'm more than happy to do that for any of you that want that. But for those of you that, you know, when I asked, have you used Canva before said, yes, yes, I've used it, but, um, you know, I want something bigger or better. Guess what? You can also use Canva for dynamic content. So if you're looking for what that next step is going to be, I recommend looking at video or at least GIFs, which are little short videos that kind of just go on repeat. The reason for that is, as I said earlier, video content gets eight times the engagement. I'll repeat that eight like eight times the engagement, it's huge. So even if you're someone who says, I'm not really good at video design or I'm not even really sure where to start, I encourage you to just try a little bit to, I mean, even if it's terrible at first, just make some practice ones in Canva, no one else has to see it but you, but just start playing around, especially when it comes to video editing, I think a lot of people get nervous. Um, I'm gonna show this video from Canva because I think they can explain it even better than I can, but there's ways to make video editing work really easily in Canva if you already have like little short snippets that you're going to upload from your phone or something like that. And I know that when we send PowerPoints out, they get sent to you as a PDF. So this will just become a static image. Don't worry, I put the link to the YouTube video below so you can copy and paste it and watch it again if you'd like to. Um, let me just see what we got. Someone said, can you add your logo to the brand kit? Unfortunately, no, the brand kit is just the heading, the subheading and the colors, but upload your logo 100% and use it. Um, the only thing that's going to happen is if you upload your logo and you want to use it on a flyer or something, um, it'll just be in your uploaded photos. And one thing, and I'll just do a quick screen share that I think people get really frustrated is if my logo was one of the first things I uploaded, how do I make sure that it stays 
oh, sorry, uploads. How do I make sure it stays up here at the top versus you know having to scroll all the way to find my logo? Um, it's really difficult <laughs> to do that. Uh, it's just, unfortunately, when you have free, I think that's what you're gonna have to do. I, if anyone has any other ideas, I'd love to hear it. What I will say is when you have pro, one of the things they've just added, as you may see here on the bottom of my left hand, is a logo spot because temp, um, not temple, Canva realized that people were having this issue with the most used photo that they uploaded being their logo and then having to drag and find it. Um, you now have a spot specifically for your logo. So it's a lot easier to find. Uh, unfortunately, otherwise you're just gonna be scrolling through your uploads. But I do appreciate that Canva just added this logo spot for, for you to easily find a logo. That's something new that they just started. All right, so I'm gonna optimize my uh, screen really quickly so you guys can all hear this video. And we're gonna see how you really quickly edit a video and then I'm gonna show you how you make a GIF. So for those of you who are thinking maybe video's not the best start for me, we'll also start with GIFs, which I think are even easier and go through that as well. So let me just um, get this video going. And if for some reason you guys cannot hear it, please put something in the chat or the Q&A so I can restart. The video packs Try that again. Powerful video tools in one easy to use platform for free. Let's discover how to get started with your next video project. Start inspired with a video template in the videos tab. Here you can see all video template types. These videos are 16 by nine, the standard size for video projects. Use the filters to view by theme or style. Let's create a blank standard video. Once inside the editor, you might notice things look a little different. The page viewer has been changed to work with video. We call this the story view. This black triangle and line is called the playhead. Click and drag it to move forward or rewind through your video. Start by choosing a template from the templates tab. Zoom in and out by using the slider at the bottom. Lastly, press the play button or hit the space bar to play a preview of your video. Time to customize our template. Discover an entire library of stock videos in the Elements tab. Search using keywords and filter by video. If you search for videos regularly, customize the object panel by adding a dedicated videos tab like this. Drag a video to a scene in the story view to replace an existing background video. Upload video from your computer or device by going to the Uploads tab. Or add video from your Facebook, Google Drive, or Instagram accounts here. Did you know you can record yourself directly within Canva to add to your design? Choose your camera and microphone then hit Start Recording. The new recording is added directly to the scene and saved to the Uploads tab so you can find it later. Now you can start inspired with a template, add, upload, and edit your next video project. Yeah, so that was pretty cool, right? Um, give me one second here. I think, yep, you guys should be able to see me again. So. Definitely, there are tons of videos that will go into more detail, but as you can see, it's there are many options here. So one, you can upload your own video if you want. You can upload your own video and then add it into a template. So as you probably saw, this is a video template and it kind of pans slightly over this group of people working. You can put your video, just like with the pictures, remember the drag and drop with the picture where you can stick it in instead of the, um, the blank, you know, like I said, rolling green with the cloud. Same thing here, you can either use the stock video or put your own video in behind this. And even if it's just a you know five second video, 10 second video, that is gonna be a huge lift in your digital marketing. It just draws that extra set of eyes and brings it up on the, um, the algorithms for the social media. Or let's say you don't have a video of you and your boyfriend or whoever that was being cute with the hearts like they did in this uh, example. Um, you can start with a stock video. So if you're comfortable, you can start with the stock video like they did. And instead of saying, let's welcome our newest tires, you can click on that, change it to say, come work, you know, um, we're hire or uh, sorry, um, 
we're looking for new clients. Um, email us today or whatever you want. And if the background video fits the vibe you're going for, use that stock video, download it, and then put it on your social media, whatever you'd like to do. Um, certainly as you start adding and removing videos, like it, uh, it showed you here on the bottom with those little plus signs, it'll get a little bit more complex, but it is a great way to get started. So for those of you that didn't know Canva does video and you've just been doing the graphics right now, it might be worthwhile to try a little bit, even try with just the stock videos and see, oh, you're like that wasn't that crazy. That was really cool. So that's how you make a Canva video. Oh. And then let's see, the other thing that you might be interested in is Canva animation. So I'm sure many of you have heard of what a GIF is. This, what I have on the right, is like a five second GIF, which means every five seconds it starts over again. And it just has all of these uh, like little icons moving in. Putting something like this on your social media is also still considered a video. So you still get that increased engagement. So I do recommend, even if you're not ready to put a whole video together or a 10 second video, try your hand at a GIF. These are really cool and really easy to make. And what you'll do is you can open an existing design and then select any of the elements and animate it. And once you've animated it, you can decide how long you want it to move around for. And then when you download it, it's downloaded as a video. Since it's short, it's a GIF. I'll show you that really quickly. I literally made this right-hand side GIF yesterday. I mean, it's really easy for you to start playing around. So let me show really quickly what that looks like. Um, so we'll follow those instructions really quickly. And let me see, I'll just use this uh, fake design that I started with, right? Um, you start with a template that's not a GIF. So this is just a normal post. So let's say you made a post for your Instagram, which by the way, you can upload a GIF to your Instagram or your Facebook too, you know? So you can start with a static post like this. And then let's say you just wanna make it a little bit more engaging. So I can click on my jewelry sale, DS, 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 whatever. And if I go up to the top, it's not readily available. Sometimes it'll say animate up here, but you can go to the three circles and there's the animate button. I can decide what I want it to do. Do I want it to bounce in? Do I want it to be a block? Let's try a block. That looks cool. Um, let's say I want this set of headphones to also be animated and let's see what I can have it do. Do I want it to tumble? Do I want it to rise from the top? Maybe I want it to rise from the top and maybe I want all of my icons to do that. Rise from the top, rise from the top, rise from the top. Let's do that. And that's my GIF. T take a look at that. That's pretty cool. Um, what I can then do is decide how long I want that to be. So um, let me go here really quickly. Where is the length? I can find that really quick. Give me a sec. Um, oh, it's up here at the top. I'm so sorry. I'm going a little poop on a Friday. <laughs> you can see how long it is up here at the top. Follow my mouse. It says five seconds. I can decide if I want this to be shorter or longer. So I can press escape really quickly. And um, oh, sorry, I think my mouse is in the way and then I'll close it. And then if I want it to be shorter, I would just um, change the length. And uh, let's see here. I think that's gonna be under this. No, there is definitely a way, give me a second. Um, Well, I don't wanna to spend too much time on this right now playing around with you guys. I normally just make them five seconds because that's the normal amount of a GIF, but there is a way to also change the video length if you prefer to make it different. I just don't wanna to spend too much time playing around. I don't do crazy amounts of video editing in here, but I do like making the GIFs. So as you saw, it just kind of moves around. Oh, here it is, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm not doing that well on a Friday with GIFs, but here it is, it's right here. And you can make it shorter. If you want it to be three seconds, you can make it longer. Um, I can make it just, you know, three seconds if I want, one second. You can see how quick that is. It was so quick, it didn't do anything. So you might want to make it a little bit longer. Let me make it like uh, four seconds instead of five seconds. You can just kind of see it's a little bit different. So you can do whatever you want in this space. Make it big, make it long. When you download it, it becomes a video. But that's how easy it is to just take a static post and then turn it into something that has a move. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, so that's how you make a quick GIF like this one, right? I mean, I made that in a couple minutes. You can make that a Facebook post. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is talk a little bit about those extra apps. So before I do that, I do see quite a few people here in the chat. Let me just see what we got going on. 
Yes, thanks, Lavanya. I did find it eventually. I was like, there's, there is a way to edit the time. I just couldn't find it. Is video on free or pro? It's both. I think on pro, you're going to have more options with what you can do, but you can certainly use it on the free version as well. And yeah, the video can be up to 20 or 30 seconds. For a GIF, though, you probably don't want it to be more than like five to 10 seconds if it's a GIF. But certainly when you're using the video option, you can make it longer. Um, yeah, WoW is right. There's a lot going on there. How about TikTok? You can certainly make a video on Canva, download it, and then upload it to TikTok if you want. That's totally fine. I am doing a webinar in a couple of weeks on TikTok, so please feel free to join that if you would like. And I'll talk a little bit more about how you use TikTok because you can edit photo, um, I'm sorry, you can edit videos in TikTok as well. That's what the platform does. Um, but certainly if you wanted to and you're more comfortable, you can make a video on Canva and then add it to TikTok. Um, yeah, there, this is a lot of info. Is there a class for just one or two capabilities at a time? Um, I'm more than happy to meet with someone one on one. You know, this is really meant to be more of a basics, just kind of saying these are all the things that you can do. It, it's a, it's pretty cool. Um, someone just said there's also a course on Coursera on how to use Canva. So that's that's another very useful resource. Um, so my last little thing here is just talking about the apps. You might not want to use the apps. You might say, this is already too much info, Sarah. Let's just start with some of the easy stuff, like making static posts. Um, but if you were interested, remember how I said you can get free photos from Pexels and Pixabay? Um, they actually have apps. So you can add them um, into your Canva so that if you're looking for a photo, you can just automatically get routed to that site. You can integrate it with your Facebook or your Instagram so that if you make the post in Canva, then it, you can have it automatically post to your Instagram. That's a really cool concept as well for those of you that are trying to be more efficient in the way you post things. Um, you can connect it to a QR code generator if you're someone who wants to make QR codes. And um, not to be overwhelming, but there are tons of apps. So here are three links for anyone who's interested in doing a deeper dive. You can take a look at some of the different types of apps if you're looking for new image effects or new publishing apps like how to publish it straight to Facebook or something like that um, and content library apps which are things like the Pexels and Pixabay which give you more content but just to kind of give you an idea of spread take a look at this page this is just a sampling of the different apps you can integrate into Canva you can add Pinterest you can add Duotone which helps you change the tones of your pictures you know you can change you can add special frames, you can add YouTube, so things go right to your YouTube, um, really, really in depth. So for a basics, I'm not gonna walk through all of these by any means, but it doesn't hurt to see what apps you can use to then make it easier for you to make a graphic and then get it where you want to go. There's a ton that can be done in this space. So how are you feeling about Canva? Sandra said, I'm feeling a little overwhelmed. There's so much going on here. I'd be curious if, um, how will the rest of you are feeling? Let me know how you're feeling. Um, someone said, how do we add apps? You would just go over here on the left-hand side. There's like, a, uh, if you click on more, it'll say apps. And then you can just add one. So let me see if I go back two pages. Um, you know, some of them show up already. It says you may also like, and then there's, oops, sorry. There's another button that says um, add and you can just add them. I don't think I have it in the screenshot, but it's quite easy to just search for one and add it. Yeah, someone says, I'm so excited. I love Canva, excited to try it. Yeah, there's a ton going on here. So I see a couple people have questions. I'm just gonna finish out the PowerPoint with our last 15 minutes and then get to the questions. So I love to ask, how are you feeling? There's a lot going on. Um, the last step, some of you might already know this, but let's say you made the video or you made the GIF or you just made that Instagram post, really nice and simple. Now you wanna download it. You can certainly just click download up here on the top. It shows up for every single one of your uh, projects download it to your computer, easy peasy, and then do whatever you want with it. But if you have it, an app integrated like Instagram and you have your Instagram connected to your Canva, you can also say, yeah, I wanna post it to my Instagram or I wanna schedule it in advance to go on my Instagram, which is super helpful because some of you might remember that Instagram does not let you schedule in advance on its own platform, but you can do that on Canva. Um, you can share it. Like I said, you can share it with other people via a link. You can put it on your Facebook, you can send it in an email. So most of the time you're probably just gonna download it, but depending on how fancy you wanna get, there's certainly other ways to send it off to wherever it's gonna go next. And um, lastly, like I said, I would be remiss if I didn't give you next steps. So try it yourself. 
there's a lot going on here. You can use canva.com's help section. Canva has an entire design school where you can see all of those step-by-step -step videos. They have a step-by-step -step video on how to make a GIF, how to make a static post, how to make a video. So please do feel free to take a look at that if you want a deeper dive into any of them. Um, in case you were looking more in terms of strategy, you might have said, this is all great, Sarah, in terms of how to use Canva, but I wanna know um, what's a smart way to use it for my social media. Here's a whole article on the five smartest ways to use Canva for social media. I think a lot of it's gonna be the same as what I said today, like integrating your Instagram and your Facebook app so it's easier to post or to schedule, um, using GIFs, using video content. Those are all really smart ways. But I encourage you to take a look at that. And um, for any of you who want a deeper dive into just making posts, this is a Canva tips and tricks video. It's about 20 minutes in length where they're gonna go a little bit deeper into just making a post step by step. So you have that option as well. Um, just as a reminder to everyone, like I said, we offer statewide digital services. So if you would like help with the next steps, sign up for our consulting, go to temple.edu slash SBDC, click the request counseling button. We're more than happy to meet with you and go over whatever the next steps are going to be for you in your digital marketing journey, your canvas, um, sorry, your Canva journey. And here's just a couple of our upcoming webinars that might be of interest to some of you. You'll all get a copy of this PowerPoint where these are linked and you can take a look at that. So I'm going to let Garbo really quickly interject and interject and put the survey in the chat for everyone. And then I'm going to take a look at all of your questions. Garbo, why don't you take it away? Okay. Um, Ms. Sarah, thank you for a wonderful presentation. Uh, please, I did forget during my introduction to mention that though my speaker has actually um, mentioned it, uh, a copy of the PowerPoint and in the link to the recording will be sent to all the attendees. Now, in addition to this, I am posting a 30 minutes, a 30 second survey about today's webinar. You know, remember as usual, we cherish your feedback, even as it helps us to increase on the services we provide to you at a low cost. So kindly take your 30 seconds and help us to fill out um, the uh, survey. Ms. Sarah, you can continue, please. Great, thanks. And then someone, um, Robert, sounds like you know a lot about Canva, so I uh, would love to pick your brain at some point too, but um, if anyone was asking about audio, he recommended an app called Mojo, where you can easily add and edit music, text, and things like that. So yeah, I didn't go into a ton of detail on the audio section today, but certainly you can upload your own video. You can also upload audio. So for example, for this video um, section, and I'll go back to that really quickly. Let's say you wanted to uh, use the template that it had, and let me pull that up really quickly. The video. Um, where's the template they had? Word or rewind. Yeah, so where they have this guy with the, the what, what would you call those, blue and orange bubbles underneath. Um, you can use the audio that they might have there, but you can also upload your own audio. Um, so. Even if you want to use the stock video, you might want to add your own audio to it. But like I said, if it seems overwhelming, you don't have to go through all of that extra editing. Canva is convenient in that you can do whatever feels right for you. You know, if you want to start off with a quick like five second stock video with maybe you editing just the words, start with that. But if you want to go more in depth with changing the audio or changing the length of the video or making your own videos or you know, even moving where these blue blobs go and maybe they move in and out animated wise, you know, um, you also have that capability. It's, it's really robust, I must say. Um, let me At see. the bottom. We got some questions in the uh, Q&A. So I'm just going to reiterate to everyone, I'm more than happy to stay on past 1.30, by the way, but if you are about to hop off, and we still have 10 minutes here, but if you were gonna hop off, I just wanna say thank you once again for joining us on a Friday. I've been really excited about teaching this session. I know a lot of people have been asking for it. Uh, and a copy of this will be sent to all of you, but also will end up on our YouTube. So share it with your friends, let them know this is happening. Um, and please do fill out the survey and let us know how we did. I take a look at all of those. It helps uh, inform us on what webinars we're gonna do. Like I said, people asked for Canva in previous surveys, so we did Canva. People asked for Pinterest in previous surveys, we're doing a Pinterest in January. So let us know not only if you liked this uh, webinar, but what you'd like to see going forward. We really appreciate that. Um, and then someone said, "Is what is the price for our services? We're free. Temple SBDC is a free service. We are paid for by your tax dollars. That's why I'm here doing this webinar. That's why we have consultants that specialize in one-on-one -on -one advising. Um, just sign up, request counseling, and you can meet with someone once, twice, 10 times. 
doesn't matter. It's always completely free to you as a small business owner. You just have to be in Pennsylvania and for profit. So we don't help nonprofits. There is a program called SCORE. And you can always just Google SCORE Philadelphia if you're a nonprofit, but we do anything that's related to small business here at the Small Business Development Center. <clears throat> um, and then Garba, would you mind just putting the link in the chat one more time? Because I think someone was having an issue um, grabbing it. And then also the survey link will be put in the follow-up email as well. So you will all get a second opportunity to fill out the survey. So let's take a look at that Q&A. Um, do you know why the links don't work on the flyers? Yeah, the links, so this is not an Adobe uh, software by any means. So it's all graphics, right? It's gonna be, um, even if you download the file as a PDF, you cannot put links on a flyer in Canva. And I'm glad you brought that up, Stacy. That's one of the things that I think a lot of people have issues with in Canva is, unfortunately, let's say, um, you know, you made this flyer, the How Are You Feeling flyer, and you tried downloading it. Even if you download it as a PDF, you can't put hyperlinks on it. But never fear. What I always do is then I open the Adobe PDF, I download it. And when you're in Adobe PDF, you can then create hyperlinks. So no, it's not something Canva has a function of. It's just, it's not that kind of platform but you can certainly download something as a PDF and then add the hyperlinks in after the fact. And I've done that plenty of times and I'm more than happy to walk you through it. If you don't have a paid version of Adobe, I'm not sure what the functionality is. Um, I work at a university, so I've always had that functionality. Might be worth looking into, but um, yeah, Canva doesn't do it. It's not something it does. <clears throat> Someone says, all right, I have to jump off. We'll catch the rest later. Yep, no problem, that's fine. General social marketing question. Do you think the time of day that you post affects the number of views? Yes, I do. <laughs> I 100% think that. And it's going to depend on each social media platform. So for example, if you are on Facebook, um, normally from like 11 to 3 on Wednesdays and Fridays, you have the most traffic. Twitter, it's normally um, early. Uh, LinkedIn is early in the morning or late at night. Twitter is um, early afternoon, evening. Um, it's gonna really depend. And we do entire social media audits where we can provide you with that information here at the SBDC. So you can always feel free to reach out and we can share that information with you. But yes, it does matter. And it's gonna be different for each social media. Um, so it really depends on how much you care about something like that uh, based off of just social media algorithms. Um, but that was a great question. Someone said, um, regarding image sizing, I've been using IGTV recently. Good for you because not a lot of people use IGTV, but I find it difficult to use the desired cover photo image. Someone mentioned to use Canva, but is there a resizing option on free Canva or is that only a pro feature? You can resize um, in free. Yeah, you, yeah, you should be able to go like I just did to, to the resize button and then change the size to what you want. They might have like an IGTV cover photo or you might have to try doing those pixels and see what fits. Um, IGTV is a little bit more obscure, but I would give it a try for sure. And you could probably even Google IGTV cover photo sizing. And even if it wasn't something that is already in the hundreds of thousands of templates Canva is by any chance, um, resize it yourself, 100%. I would recommend doing that. Someone says, um, off topic, but business page isn't doing well. How can I get help? Once again, fill out our form online. You can go to temple.edu slash SBDC. There's a giant green button that says request counseling. And if that is um, something that you're having trouble with or you can't find it, you can always send an email to SBDC, which is Small Business Development Center. So SBDC at temple.edu and we will send you the form. Um, but please do feel free to meet with us one-on-one -on -one and we can walk you through what's going on. Uh, a lot of people struggle with social media at first. The biggest thing is just how to get engagement, right? How do you get followers? And guess what? The way to do that is by having dynamic marketing content. So it all comes to full circle, right? The reason we talk about Canva today is because you're going to want to engage people. And by making GIFs or the little videos or just having um, marketing that's cohesive with branding, is so easy with Canva and it really will lift the way your business looks online. Yep, um, we are always happy to help. So I got some, some chat bubbles here. Someone, thank you, thank you, yep. If there's anything you guys want me to show you in the last five minutes, please let me know. I'm happy to pull Canva back up if you had a specific question. Um, 
Sam, I'm not sure what's going on with your chat, but we will also send you the link in a follow-up email for the survey. But I appreciate your interest in filling it out. I would encourage all of you to fill that out. Thank you so, so much for being here today. All right, well, we still have five minutes. I'm a little surprised. I thought this, this uh, session would go over, <laughs> um, but maybe it's because it's a Friday. So if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I will close it out. There's still 45 of you online here. So um, thank you for being here on a, on a Friday once again. And let's see, someone said, do you need to worry about intellectual rights? The photos, if we use them on our website. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's a great question. So if you're using any of these photos from like Pexels or Pixabay or anything, they are royalty free. You do not need to worry about intellectual property for those. Um, same thing with Canva. Anything that's sourced from Canva, you can use on your website. The one thing I would say about Pexels and Pixabay is um, you might just want a little like disclaimer, like in the bottom of the picture or something that says who made it. It's just nice to do because those photographers are putting their photos up as stocks for free. Um, so they're also, you know, small businesses like yourself. Uh, but I wouldn't worry about IP from that perspective. And same thing with Canva, because you signed up for the Canva account, they have these images. Now you can do what you want with those images. Do you have to give Canva credit when using templates? No, you don't need to do that. Don't feel like you need to do that. Mm -mm. You wouldn't do that with Adobe Photoshop, you wouldn't do that with InDesign. So that's not something that you're required to do by any means. But useful question. And then how to do landscape design. Okay, let me pull up Canva really quick. Um, and uh, let's take a look. So um, I'm, if you mean landscape as in like, uh, let's, I'm a little confused, but if this is what you're talking about, great. And if it's not, put another uh, comment in the chat. But for example, I would consider this landscape, right? So anything that the horizontal is longer than the vertical is a landscape. Um, let's say you were talking about a flyer, right? So you normally want a, an eight and a half by 11 flyer. Um, eight and a half, oh, that's not eight and a half by 11. Where's my eight and a half by 11 flyer? It's not one of the first ones that pops up. That's sad, but oh, it's this one, duh. <laughs> if I just scrolled over it. Eight and a half by 11 is the most common flyer size, um, if that's what you're referencing. And you'll notice it's normally in portrait. What you can always do, of course, is when you go to resize, switch it so that the width is 11 and the height is 8.5. Ooh, let's get into that. There we go. And then resize. And now it's landscape. I'm not sure if that's what you meant by landscape, uh, but you can always change anything to a landscape if you want. Okay, great, T. Glad that worked. So yeah, you can always resize the flyer. You can resize anything to make it more landscape. And the way it looks on your screen is the way it's going to download. So if it looks longer horizontally than vertically, trust that that's, that's what it is. It is a landscape. All right. Awesome. What about resizing for a cover photo? As someone mentioned, can you show us that perhaps? Yeah, sure. So um, you can always start with, a, with it being that template. So let's say you wanted to do a Facebook cover photo. One, you can always search for that template. And by the way, they have templates for you. But let's say you wanted a Facebook cover photo, we can just search by that category. These are all Facebook cover photos. So you can pick one of these and start with it. Or you can go to create a design and pick Facebook cover photo. Start from scratch, whichever you'd like to do. Um, and what I mentioned earlier was, let's say you had this Facebook cover photo and you wanted your cover photo on Facebook to be the same as your cover photo on LinkedIn, for example. That is a great way to use the resize here. And um, let's say I wanna make it the LinkedIn banner size. Then I can, I can either resize this right now or I can copy and resize. Copy and resize gives you a second one. So you didn't delete this one, you made it second. One thing I will say is I think the resize and copy options are a little limited in free version. I would double check that. Um, definitely in pro, you can copy and resize as much as you want. I think in free, you might be a little limited to like, a, making it once in Facebook and then making it again in LinkedIn banner or just resizing it manually yourself. By the way, I wouldn't worry too much about resizing manually because let's say you had the Facebook cover and you want to make a LinkedIn banner. Um, this is a really cool feature. If you hover over any of these, it tells you the pixelation. So you might've said, I have no idea what a LinkedIn banner pixel is, but if you hover over it's 2000 by 600. So you can always look at it that way too, or if you're using other graphic design, uh, tools or applications, 
and you weren't sure what your pixelation should be, even from a research perspective, this is a great place to start. So yeah, that's how you do that really quickly. I always recommend using this for photos. All right, someone said in the free version you can copy and the resizing is limited. Yeah, that's what I figured. So thank you, Lavanya. That's what I figured. So um, if you're having issues with the resizing, like I said, manually do the resize to whatever you found. Someone said, if we get Canva Pro and then don't have any longer, does that impact it? It shouldn't. Um, once you've already made something, I, I'm a little confused by the question, but like, let's say you made something and it had a Canva Pro image and you're no longer using Canva Pro. At that point, yes. So um, this isn't a good example, but if I was using a Canva Pro image and you can tell that it's a pro image because it should have, um, these are all pre, but if you hover over it, it should have that little crown, right? What will happen is for me, then that was cool. I just put it in the background there. I can make them all red if I want. That's kind of cute. Um, for me, it looks fine right now. But if you then go back to a free account, what's going to happen is it's going to create that grid lock, probably like the same thing you've seen with stock photos. And if you download it, then you would have to pay the dollar to get those grid lines to go away. So if you were gonna use pro and then go back to free, I would download the pictures first. <laughs> you know, I would download this so that you still have it. But if you're still editing it in Canva, um, some of that functionality will go away. But let's say in terms of resizing or things like that, once you go back to a free version, it's not going to take away any of your templates by any means. It's not gonna like delete your items that you've worked on, but the but the pictures I would worry about. I'm pretty sure the pictures will then go back to you having to pay for them. So if you're planning on doing something like that, download, like I would download this, click download, save it on your desktop, get it out of Canva once you're worked on working on it so you can still use it after the fact. That was a good question though. Um, but yeah, I, I would worry a little bit, but definitely if you only wanna pay for Pro for a month, for example, use it to a full advantage, take all of those free images or you know the, the pro images, download all of the stuff you've made before you go back to free. And let's see, I think that was all the questions. Uh, it's hard to tell in the chat. So I hope I got to everybody. And then what's going on in the Q&A? Do the pics and videos switch from computer friendly view to mobile friendly without issue? Um, if you're using it, for example, to make a Facebook cover photo or a LinkedIn banner or any of that, then yeah, when you then put it on that platform, it's going to automatically switch to mobile friendly because the mobile friendly portion is actually the way it's integrating into that other platform. The photo itself isn't necessarily something that goes between computer and mobile friendly. What's going to matter is the application that you're using it on. Um, so that question was a little like, I'm not gonna say off topic, but a little off kilter because photos themselves don't normally switch between um, computer and mobile friendly just themselves. But like, if what you mean is if I download this photo and put it on my computer and then download it to my phone, will it look the same? The answer is yes. But for it to be mobile friendly and computer friendly on an application, that's gonna depend entirely on the application. Um, one example of that might be a website. So that's why I said earlier, someone asked, you know, can you make a website template? Um, it's gonna depend on your website pixelation, right? So if the web hand pixel that you give works on your computer, but just is way too large on mobile, for example, that's gonna be a sizing issue and you're gonna wanna make sure it's resized correctly. But that's something you have to play around with. But certainly any of the templates that go to like a social media account, social media is going to automatically resize it correctly for you in that space. I hope that kind of answered that. That was a bit of a wonky response. Um, all right. I think that was all the questions. We're at 135. Thank you for all of you that stayed on the extra five minutes. Uh, I think we're going to go ahead and close it out, Garba. Yeah. Uh, before we wrap it up, I just want to use this um time to thank each and every one of you for making it uh, for keeping it a day with us you know my special thanks also goes to our presenter thank you for your time and you know thank you for answering all the questions that actually came up on board during the presentation and to my fellow team members thank you for your time your hard work and your effort for making it possible for this webinar to come into existence once again to everyone thank you and do have a nice day
Bye-bye. Have a good weekend, everyone. Yes, peace.